Hi, Graham here and welcome back to the studio. In this video I want to talk about my song Seven Feet by Five, which is based on the true story of a man called Anthony Ray Hinton from Alabama. On the 31st of July 1985, Anthony Ray Hinton was minding his own business, cutting his mother's lawn, when two police officers showed up and arrested him on a charge of robbery and attempted murder. The police had no evidence and Hinton had a cast iron alibi, but the police chose to ignore those details and instead decided to add two murders to the charge sheet because they fit the MO. What followed was a catalogue of injustice normalised by the culture of racism that's still prevalent in many parts of the United States. A police lieutenant told Hinton, if you didn't do it, one of your brothers did it, so just take the rap. If you haven't worked it out yet, Anthony Ray Hinton is a black American. The state had no evidence to connect Hinton to the crimes, so a court bailiff actually took the stand and lied about Hinton to secure the conviction. The prosecution's only evidence was a rusty old gun owned by Hinton's mother. The gun clearly hadn't been fired in decades, but that didn't matter. The prosecution had their man, and Hinton was found guilty and sentenced to death by electrocution for crimes he did not commit. He spent the next 28 years on death row, in a cell just 30 feet away from the electric chair. During that time, he counted 54 men walking past his cell to be executed. Hinton's story is told in his book The Sun Does Shine, and it's a terrifying tale, but there's also a core of humanity and hope running right through it, because when everything else is taken from you, humanity and hope is all you have left. The title of the song refers to the size of Hinton's cell, which was seven feet by five, approximately the same dimensions as a king-sized bed, but considerably less comfortable. Now I've taken one or two liberties with the lyrics, but essentially everything mentioned in the song is taken from Hinton's story. Alabama's death row prisoners were kept in these tiny cells all day long. Access to the exercise yard was limited, and death row inmates were confined to cages while in the yard. Exercise wasn't allowed when it was raining, and Hinton tells us that he never saw the stars for the whole of those 28 years. While he was on death row, Hinton started a reading group, which gave him and his fellow inmates a limited opportunity to read and get to know each other, and it led to some unlikely friendships between prisoners who may well have been enemies on the outside. All of the songs on Nine Lives are performed in the first person, apart from this one. It just felt wrong for me, a fairly privileged white European, to voice the words of an oppressed black American from Alabama. So I decided initially to write the song in the third person. The problem with third person lyrics, he was this and he did that, is that it distances the listener from the subject. The final version of the song was written in second person narrative. You were this and you did that. This feels much more personal because it puts the listener in the role of the narrator, speaking directly to Hinton about his life. Now I confess to not knowing much about the music of Alabama, so when I started writing I began by experimenting in the American folk style. What came out was pretty unremarkable and sounded a bit too much like the ballad of Jesse James for my liking. Now he can walk in the rain Feel the sun on his skin or stand and look up at the stars da 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 Behind The American rock band Leonard Skinnerd are well known for their song Sweet Home Alabama, so I tried emulating their southern rock sound and reworked the song using electric guitar riffs. That still didn't feel quite right, and I began to wonder if combining southern rock sound with bluegrass banjo and fiddle might work, but in reality the song was going nowhere, so I was on the point of giving up. I put the song to one side for a few days and spent some time playing my acoustic guitar using open tunings. I've never really played with open tunings much, so everything felt quite fresh, and it was while I was doing this that I stumbled onto what became the main riff for the song.
I played it a few times and quickly realised it needed to be played on a slide guitar, something like a Dobro or a National. Unfortunately, I didn't have one of those and this was in the middle of a lockdown, so I wouldn't be going guitar shopping anytime soon. Instead, I modified my acoustic guitar by laying a pencil under the strings just in front of the first fret. This makes the action much higher, raising the strings well above the fretboard, which makes it easier to use the slide without bashing it on the frets. The sound produced is reminiscent of Delta Blues, which originates in the state of Mississippi. Now that I'm very aware that Mississippi isn't Alabama, but it is the state next door, so I allowed myself a little artistic and geographic license. As I was already blurring the state boundaries, I looked to the other side of Mississippi, to the state of Louisiana, which is the home of Zydeco music. A prominent feature of Zydeco is the accordion which was another instrument I didn't have. So I used a combination of Cubase plugins and a 25-year-old Roland sound module to get the right sound. The authentic Zydeco accordion style is fairly staccato and busy, and my performance is perhaps a little restrained. But once I'd added the accordion to the song, it really started coming to life. Now the secret to making the artificial accordion sound real is to recreate the volume swells associated with a bellows instrument, and this was done using the MIDI volume control on a keyboard to shape the sound. The resulting MIDI data was recorded and then edited in Cubase, which I like to do by drawing on a graphics tablet. The final note played on the accordion doesn't just stop. The loudness swells just before the end of the note, and it's emphasised by the snare and shaker parts. There's a slight time lag between the end of the accordion note and the final snare drum hit, and it was tempting to remove that lag altogether, but real musicians aren't always that precise, so instead I used careful editing to make the time lag just right. The snare drum is a real one, played with wire brushes, while the kick drum and triangle parts were produced using drum kit plugins. The tambourine uses a plugin that I made myself with samples of my own tambourine, and the shaker part is me playing a real shaker. I still wanted to add banjo to the song, so I sent a rough mix to my Apple Twig songbook bandmate Eddie Nixon, and a few days later he sent back some very nice finger-picked banjo tracks, which I dropped into the project. So that's how this song was put together. There's a link to an article about Anthony Ray Hinton in the description, and a link to his book The Sun Does Shine, which I highly recommend. Hope you've enjoyed this video, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>